And speaking of your background, let's talk about foreign policy. Uh, you, you were a governor for 10 and a half years, mm -hmm. and then a governor for three. But what qualifies you to, uh, to run and to shape the foreign policy of this country as opposed to other candidates who may actually have more foreign, direct foreign policy experience? Well, a couple of things that some people may not realize is that governors deal with foreign governments in the issues of trade and cultural exchange. So it's not like we're devoid. I mean, I've been to over uh, probably 40 countries, I think, something like that in the course of my life. Not all of them as governor, but uh, certainly did a lot of uh, international work as a governor. But I would say perhaps even more importantly, good foreign relations are really about one's character and judgment and capacity to work with human beings. You know, Ronald Reagan uh, became president, and a lot of the criticism was he's been an actor. He's been a governor of California for eight years, and that's been, you know, a long time ago. He, he'd been out of office as a mm -hmm. governor for what, 10 years, I guess. And, and the rub was he really isn't capable or qualified to handle these very delicate foreign issues. Yet 10 years after he was sworn in as president, there wasn't a Soviet Union, the Berlin Wall was down, and the Cold War was over. I think he did a pretty good job. So uh, that's where I would say that it's more about a person's capacity for uh, decision making and judgment than anything. All right, and now let's talk about health care. You've got a great personal story, uh, probably one of the best personal stories I've ever seen of a, of a politician uh, with, a, with a personal struggle with your own health, and you overcame that. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about that, just briefly, so people know what that is, but also extending that out, how do you take that personal experience and create a better health care system for all Americans? Well, five years ago, my doctor told me if I didn't change a lifestyle that I was living, which was overeating, under-exercising, uh, that I would uh, be entering the last decade of my life, and that really got my attention. I decided I didn't want that as my exit strategy, so I made some serious lifestyle changes, gave up fried foods and sugary things, and instead began to exercise and eat good, wholesome, whole foods. Um, over the course of about a year, a little more, I lost 110 pounds, uh, began a vigorous exercise program, ended up running four marathons, training for a fifth. Um, I, I came also to realize that my own personal experience was really similar to that of millions of Americans who were indulging themselves in bad health habits. And the result was not only that they didn't look good and feel good, the real problem was the cost is just staggering. So now we have a health care system in this country where 80% of all of our health care expenditures are spent on chronic disease, and we simply can't sustain it. And so what would you do as president to, uh, to make that sustainable? I'd lead this country to a change of culture from a disease culture to a health culture. It's not really going to be able to be sustainable until we start focusing on wellness and prevention. Personal responsibility, those are really important Republican principles, but personal empowerment to engage in personal responsibility with incentives. If I live healthier, give me the incentives, less uh, cost on my insurance, um, uh, benefits and, and uh, financial incentives so that I'm making choices that are going to cost the government and going to cost my employer a lot less money. All right, let's see if I have any other questions. Oh, okay. So last night in the debate you had a great one-liner about you're from Hope, Arkansas, yeah. uh, give us another chance. But that made me wonder, what, do you have any kind of relationship to, uh, to the Clinton family? I mean, you, you guys come from the same place, yeah. similar service. Your story, your story, former governor of Arkansas, is very similar to his when he ran for president. You know, I didn't know Bill Clinton as a child because he's nine years older than me. So he had already moved away from Hope. He really didn't grow up there. He grew up in Hot Springs, but he was born in Hope. Uh, his mother and my father were classmates in high school. Uh, you know, I've known members of his family, his extended family, throughout my life. Uh, but I've known him. I always say, you know, I have the distinction of being probably the only person in America whom Bill Clinton has campaigned against every time I ever ran for office uh, as a U.S. Senator. Uh, when I ran for U.S. Senate, didn't win. Twice for lieutenant governor, twice for governor. Um, you know, so Bill Clinton has campaigned against me. I also have the distinction I've campaigned against him every time. But we, we have actually had a very cordial and decent relationship. What he did in my elections were the proper political obligations he had. I did the same. Uh, but we've never taken it personally. I've had, a, frankly, a very positive relationship with him. And uh, I guess my main goal right now, I just don't want his wife to be president. All right. Well, that's, uh, our time is up, so thank you very much, Governor Huckabee. Thank you, James. I truly appreciate the opportunity to sit down. And I have this for you. Okay. This, is a, this is a pencil puppet oh. that I made of you. <laughs> I, make, I make videos about all the candidates, and this is yes. the one I hold up when I talk about you. So I want you to have it oh, thank as, a, you. As, a, as a memento of this interview. There we go. There's the, the pencil <laughs> puppet. There you go. Governor Mike Huckabee, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thank you.